Lincoln Riley, thanks for doing this so much. Appreciate it. Welcome to LA. Uh, one of the first things I wanted to ask you is, for a guy that, you know, for, by all accounts, this happened last minute after the Oklahoma State game, the USC, you've gotten gone pretty fast to get to where you are right now to assemble this roster. How did that come about? Uh, started on the plane ride uh, out to LA, actually. That was uh, basically a two and a half hour personnel meeting. We knew uh, we were, listen, we were against the gun when we came out here. We, we knew that. We, we knew there was, you know, basically about three weeks before the high school signing day, and then you had all the potential mid-year transfers a few weeks after that. So we knew a lot of our roster work was going to have to be done quickly. Uh, we had the built-in advantage of being able to watch uh, last year's team practice, and I think that was basically became a kind of a scouting mission for us to, to be able to evaluate those guys on the field. and and then kind of went into a roster overhaul, if you will, and the, the transfer portal um, with the additions, obviously, of some very key high school players, but primarily building this initially through the transfer portal made the most sense to us. It feels, i got to be honest, just a, the traditionalist in you, it kind of feels weird building a roster this way. It does, but it was very clear to those of us on the staff that this was absolutely the right way to build this and uh you had to think six months ago kind of where we were at and and all the changes that have happened that amount of time it has it's gone fast but luckily we're at a place that in a lot of ways sells itself is this the way of the world going forward in general do you want to sign you know i think you have eight high school signees this year maybe wrong but is this the way the world the portal from now on? Uh, it's going to be a part. Now, we don't, I hope that we never sign eight high school players again. I always want that to be more. Um, I would want to get more balance there. And I think we, we will. We were just in a very, obviously, kind of transformative year for us and a unique year uh, in terms of the timing and kind of how all this unfolded. So uh, we want the high school players to be a bigger part of our roster going forward. But we... Also, I think it would be foolish to say that we're not going to take advantage of, of the transfer portal. It's, it's been very beneficial for us up to this point. Uh, it's obviously been something I've used at times throughout my career, and it's worked out okay with a couple of those guys. And uh, so, yeah, I think it'll be a, be a combination. But, yeah, is it the way of the world? It is. One of those guys is Caleb Williams, your quarterback at OU. He wasn't automatic, it seems like. He took three weeks, I think, before... I think the deadline to enroll was late January. Speak to him and, and how that was another maybe recruiting process when he got yeah, in the portal. Yeah, yeah, no, it was. It absolutely was. It, it, I think there was a lot of assumptions that, well, he's just going to go to SC because, you know, the, the people and the familiarity. But, I mean, this is a, it's a different program. It's a, in a different, wildly different location. It's in a different conference. I mean, the, everything about it is different. And... I think just to assume that a guy's going to go just because of a couple of people is, is not right, especially ones that have the options like Caleb did. So I think he and his family were you know, thorough in their process, just like they were coming out of high school, kind of restarted that. And, and uh, there was, when, when he came up to visit him, when we talked, obviously there was a lot of familiarity, but there was a lot that we were both kind of learning about this place at the same time. And we had to you know, look at each other and make sure that we both felt like this was going to be a great fit, and ultimately we did. What have you had to get used to while you're here, just the whole culture? I don't, I don't say get used to. I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to be able to experience it. It's, uh, it's, it's awesome. I mean, you, you can see why this place is, uh, why so many people want to live here, um, why so many people want a vacation here. Uh, it's... Uh, it is. It's like a dream. I mean, it's the, the, the place we live, the things we're able to do, the opportunities for our families uh, to be able to work at a place like this. I mean, here we are sitting outside on just an average day here. I mean, this is, uh, it's, the place really does sell itself in, in all ways. And you can, it, it's, it's so, it's so unique in our sport. Uh, you know, that, that's been maybe the part to me that's, you always knew this place was special. You look back at the history and there's always a reason why. But when you get out here, you get boots on the ground, you get a feel for it. It's, uh, it's just, it's very unique in our sport. There's really nothing else like it. And uh, it's pretty cool to be up. When you got that call, whenever that call came from USC, what went through your mind? Because you're at one superpower, you're not at another superpower. You've been highly successful at both places so far, obviously here. What went through your mind? Oh, a lot. I don't yeah. know that I could 
sit here and describe it in 30 minutes. Uh, there's, you, you just, I, I think the feeling that a, a, a really, really big decision for, for my family, you know, for, for my career, but also for a lot of other people is getting ready to happen one way or the other. And, uh, it, you know, we're lucky to have the opportunity, but those aren't easy decisions to make. And uh, you, you carry that, you know, because it, either way you go, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect a lot of people. And uh, that, that, that weighs heavily on you. That's, there's, there's the human aspect of this that you, I, I don't know that I'll ever get past all that because you, you've, I've had to learn in this job, you try to make decisions that are best, best for your family. You try to make decisions that are best for a program. You get in, in situations where you make decisions that are best for individuals, but you're never going to satisfy everyone, and you're never going to be able to make decisions that work out perfectly for every single person involved. And that's that's uh, that's the thing that you know in jobs like this that you have to live with, and that's something that I'll always have to carry with me. USC is a flagship program of the Pac-12. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of this. What goes through your mind when you say, "Well, if USC does well, the Pac-12 does well," and a lot of this is on USC to get the Pac-12 back to where it was, five years without a playoff berth, you know that, 17 years without a national championship. What part of this is that? Oh, a lot. I, I mean, and, and that's been, to, in my opinion, just looking at college football over kind of recent history, that's been the difference, in my opinion, between this league and a lot of the other leagues. I, what, would, what, what would the Big 12 have been in the you know, recent history if, if Oklahoma was down? You know, what would the ACC have been if Clemson would have been down? You know, what would the Big Ten be right now if Ohio State had been down for the last 15 years? I mean, it's it, it, insert any league in there. I mean, that's just the nature of it. I, the, the, even is, it, in the SEC's had a tremendous run, but I mean, t take Bama out of that for the last 15 years. What does it look like? And, and so uh, your flagship programs have to perform and they have to play at their potential. And uh, that's, in my opinion, been the biggest thing that's hurt this league. But it also, to me, is you're looking at it like, what a unique opportunity. Have you met Pete Carroll? I have, I have. I, I got to go out and spend some time with him at Seattle uh, a couple years ago. They were nice enough to have me out, spend a few days there. And yeah, he's uh, one of a kind. He built this thing, or at least the last thing. That was he did. You said, you're quoted as saying when you came in, I'm not big on false promises. What do you mean by that as it relates to this job? I, I just think of these deals, you, you get everybody that wants to stand up and say, you know, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. I mean, I think you, you have some goals that you set out, but it's not about, you know, winning a press conference. It's not about pregame speeches. I, Coach Stoops used to always use the, the line that, that Newt Rockney died a long time ago, you know, which that was, you know, the kind of the thought process being, all that rah rah stuff and all that for the camera that's that's great but that doesn't win football games and it's it's about the work you put in it's about the people that you surround uh, yourself and the players with it's about the culture that you build and it'll football will always be about that so that's that's kind of what we've spent our time on and where you're going to see all of our effort and energy go into how has jordan addison fit in the new receiver from pittsburgh well first i think it's exciting to have him here i mean to have a guy that was one of the best players in college football uh, that ultimately chose that he wanted to be here at USC, that believed in us, um, that believed in this program, kind of what we were doing before we've even played a game. I mean, I think it's exciting. I, I think guys like that, it, it sends a message to, you know, future recruits and the guys looking at it that, you know, here's a guy that could have went and played football anywhere that he wanted to after the year that he had, and, uh, and he chose here. Uh, it's going to be exciting to, to, to put him into our offense. I mean, obviously our offense has a tremendous history of, of great wide receivers, guys that have produced uh, and become tremendous players, uh, both at this level and in the NFL. And it's fun to watch all the great things that he that he did at Pitt last year, and, and to think about him and our offense. Um, it's uh, it's exciting because he brings, you know, instant productivity. Uh, he's he's, uh, you know, very kind of well balanced receiver, um, very good after the catch. And I think the fun thing about Jordan is, I mean, he he came up on his official visit, and he he didn't want to talk about anything else other than football. I I, I don't know that I've ever had a more football centered visit um, that I can remember through all the years. I mean, it was it was all he wanted to do was watch tape and talk ball and talk about how he could how we thought that he could improve and and how he could help the team. That was one of the first questions he asked was how do you think the team will will accept me coming in? So it shows you what kind of kid that we that we brought in here and 
excited to see what he can do to help our team and our program, and we're excited about what we can do to help him and his ultimate goal of, of continuing to, to become an elite receiver and, and continue to grow in that role. Well, you, you raise a good point because part of the narrative there is he didn't come here primarily because of football. How do you answer that? Uh, that's, that's the internet, that's Twitter, <laughs> that's, that's people that uh, can say whatever they want with, with no responsibility attached behind it. Um, this, this kid is, uh, is all ball, that's why he's at USC. How's this offense going to look in relation to what you did at Oklahoma? Any change at all? Yeah, yeah, we need to, we need to get better. And, you know, the skill sets are going to be different. Uh, I, I like the skill sets that we have there. Uh, I, I really love the, the staff that we've built. And I think some of the creativity in that room and, and the, um, is, is really, really good. And so, yeah, I, I mean, I think we've always felt like if we can get you know, pieces that are difference makers that we can put together a system that'll give people trouble. And I think we'll have an opportunity to do that. It'll be interesting to see now, now that we kind of have our roster more or less set, uh, the, once we get out to fall camp and we get a chance to really kind of build and see what our strengths are, uh, it'll be fun to, to tailor it and build it from there. But very encouraged what I saw from the spring and I feel like we'll have a chance to be a good group. You mentioned it, it is a cliche. Here's a kid from Muleshoe, Texas. You were at Texas Tech, you're at East Carolina, you're at OU, among other places. What's your earliest memory of this place? Uh, Reggie, Matt, um, obviously Coach Carroll. I mean, that, you know, those teams were just, I mean, Taylor Mays, all those guys, I mean, Taylor's on our staff now. Uh, just, I just remember turning on, you know, college football, you know, you hear, you know, Keith Jackson's voice, here's some of the iconic guys calling the sport, and here's the Coliseum. And it just, to, to just a kid that didn't know anything about anything, it just looked different. You saw games all over the country at other great venues, and obviously there's a lot of other great places and, and, and all that in college football, but there was just something about this that was different. It just, it felt different when you watched it. The energy behind it was different. Um, again, I go back to how uniquely positioned this school is in our sport. And uh, yeah, so that's, I think, one of the big picture visions is, you know, walking into that Coliseum and that place packed and that energy back to what I saw when I was a little kid watching it on my TV at home. I think I noticed that at your press conference, you kind of glanced over your shoulder when you put the visor on and said, this is surreal. It is. You know, you, you saw that, you remembered that at, at that moment. Yeah, a lot of people thought I was talking about, you know, the views and all of that, and which those are, it's, it's unbelievable up there. But nah, yeah, I was thinking like, you know, wait till this place is packed. You know, wait, I, want, I want people to be able to experience, like little kids out there, you know, I want them to be able to experience what a lot of us did when this thing was really running at a high level. Thanks, Lincoln. You got it, Dennis. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Lincoln Riley saying all the right things right there, especially talking about the culture that he's hoping to bring to USC as we take a look at the odds breakdown. The win total now set at nine. They're at plus 200 to win the Pac-12, plus 2,500 to win the college football playoff title. And you take a look at some of those transfers he brought over to, o or to USC from Oklahoma. The headliner, of course, being Caleb Williams. Williams at plus 1,000 to win the Heisman. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.